hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so last week i talked about different needs or perception or misconceptions people have about doctors i did this with my colleague dr akpara and we're able to debunk at least two of these myths and i promised i was going to come back with the concluding part this week so here i am with the concluding part of the meat so get ready <laughs> Have terrible handwriting. Hmm. Is that true? Uh, maybe like uh, maybe sixty to seventy percent of it is true. Okay, but it's not totally true. Doctors, not all doctors have terrible handwriting. And no, 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 they don't teach us how to have terrible handwriting in school. There is no course called how to write how to write terribly as a doctor really we did we, there's no course like that in school okay so let me just give you um let me let me try and explain you know maybe um give a little reason why you might have some doctors with terrible handwriting it you know back in school when, when we were receiving lectures and all of that most of our lectures are actually our notes are actually dictated to us our lecturers dictate notes to us they don't write they hardly write on the board or any of that you know write on the board wait for you to finish writing then they ask you are you done writing can i clean this part are you secondary school or in primary school like grow up you're in university <laughs> so that kind of thing so really you have to write like pretty fast you know because lecturer is not going to wait for you to finish up and all of that so most of the time people are just scrolling and writing short forms you know and if you do that consistently over over time of course at some point your handwriting might become very terrible for some people for some people they don't even write notes all we do is for some of us i'm saying some of us because i'm guilty <laughs> we just tell you just look across and like oh he's writing and you look at his oh he has good writing we need to copy your notes or photocopy your notes after you get so basically it wasn't after school after university after med school it wasn't because after school what you're doing is you're, you're writing notes patient notes and all and you have a lot of patients to see you're not just seeing one patient in a day and then you know you have all the day all the time to write you're writing a lot of notes you're filling forms you're doing this you're going for word round your consultant is dictating things to you you have to write very fast because as he's talking you have to be writing because once he's done with this patient he's done he's moving to the next patient he does not care whether you've written or you've not written you know he's just talking patient this patient has this patient has that and then you know you just have to write, 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 write and then you move to the next patient so it's 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 crazy so doctors really have to write very fast maybe that's you know that's one of the reasons why our writing has become very terrible or it starts to look like chicken scratch at some point and all of that but then the thing is the good thing here there's there's actually something you know there's a good there's something good coming up you know these days doctors don't have to write so much anymore of course we have to these days we've gone digital a lot of clinics are going digital now so a lot of this information patients notes and all of that is we impute them electronically now so yeah um i i hardly get to write patients notes these days with pen and paper anymore i just put them up in the computer and psh, the only thing i get to write these days is prescription drug prescription and all and when i get to write it i actually tell my patient this is what i'm writing for you you know and so when i come to ask me and i tell them that oh this is what i'm prescribing you know so yes our writings can be you know terrible yeah but not all not all of us so here's another one it says doctors know everything about medicine like everything that has to do with medical knowledge a doctor knows about it Nah, I don't think that's true. Mm -mm. That perception is not true. You know, the society has a way of making everyone think doctors are supposed to know everything when it comes to medical stuff. Really, it's not true. Uh, pretty much while we're back in school, okay? Back in school, yes, we, we read wide, you know, because you you were not so sure where your where your questions were going to come from so pretty much you knew all the blood vessels their pathways you knew all the nerve plexuses you know 
all the blemishes in the limbs, upper limbs, lower limbs, everything, you know, like all of that, cranial nerves, everything, you know, at the tip of your fingers, you could actually like talk about these things and all. But right now, most of us have specialized in different areas in medicine and dentistry and you know, different areas. So at some point, you just get to focus on where you're specialized in and somehow you start to forget some things about other fields, other fields in medicine. You know, it's what you're using every day that you tend to always, you know, remember and use. You know, the saying that goes, what you don't use, you lose. So if I'm not making use of a particular knowledge, or if I'm not using, making use of a particular information, at some point, I'll lose it. You get, at some point, I may forget about it and, you know, just focus on what I have right in front of me. I'm a dentist, yes. So pretty much, I'm focused more on everything that has to do majorly with the mouth, with your, your face, you know, from... Um, your eyebrows all the way down to your chin so the lower to third of your face is pretty much where I'm really concerned about and then your mouth and everything that has to do with your oral health okay so if you come to ask me questions about um, your leg or you come to ask me questions about your kidney okay I can answer you on a base I can give you some basic answers based on maybe what I've been taught when I was in school anatomy and all of that but I cannot give you some very you know detailed information when it comes to urology and stuff like that because why I'm a dentist I'm, I'm, that's not my field my field is not urology if you meet a urologist she'll probably give you all the answers that you want so pretty much yes that's what I'm trying to say that doctors do not know everything about medicine you can't go to you can go to a dermatologist and, and you know start to ask questions about your diabetes or start to ask questions ask your dermatologist questions about your I'll use what I'll use kidney again you know you know questions that your urologist is supposed, is supposed to answer you know your dermatologist will probably also give you some basic answers and they refer you to a specialist in urology okay basically so yeah doctors do not know everything about medicine so another myth which I'm going to debunk is the um, idea the perception that doctors hate alternate medicine that means doctors hate um, complementary medicine or um, traditional medicine so complementary alternate medicine which is calm therapy or we hate traditional medicine that's wrong it's not a I won't say doctors hate alternate medicine or traditional medicine so there's this perception that doctors are quite dismissal when it comes to traditional medicine or alternate medicine like we don't even want to try it at all or we don't even we hate it you know that's the word on the street that doctors hate it we don't hate it we're just very cautious when it comes to traditional medicine now doctors are trained to practice evidence-based medicine okay what that means is if it's not tested if it hasn't been tested if it hasn't been proven you know in the body, but if it hasn't gone through research and all, then pretty much we might then we might just not make use of it really. So that's the problem we have with the traditional medicine. Okay, traditional medicine have potentials. Okay, of course we will not deny the fact that it comes. They have their potential, and you know. But now the thing is, they have not gone through the proper process, you know, of going through research regulation and all of that you know and then you know we have proof that this works just because it works with somebody doesn't mean that yes it works with everybody okay let's take for example the um i think it's igbo agbo that people take okay and they say it cures malaria you know it cures this it cleanses the body it does all of that all of that all of that I'm not disputing it, but all I'm saying is, okay, what's the dosage for this agbo, alright? What are the drug interactions that it has? What are the side effects, okay? What is the major, what are the ingredients? What are the major ingredients? What are the, you understand? These are things that, that we need to know about, okay? So that, those are the things we're talking about. There's no record of any of these things, really. So if traditional medicine can actually, if the producers or, you know, can actually allow these drugs to go through the process of being, um, 
the process of research regulation and all of that fine pretty much we'll be cool with it okay because we need to know what does it contain how does it work um what is the um where where has it been tested you know all of these questions need to be asked okay but then if we don't have answers to this question then psh, question mark query query we might just not be keen to use it so it's not as if doctors hate traditional medicine or oh my god we don't want to have anything to do with it or all of that that's not true we just are being very careful very cautious because at the end of the day we're dealing with lives we're not just dealing with animals we're not just dealing with you know non-living objects we're dealing with human beings life and life is precious so yeah we want to be very careful with all of this so really it's about the safety it's about the efficacy it's about drug interaction we're concerned about all of this if traditional medicine or alternate medicine can go through all of this process then why as doctors will gladly prescribe them if they are needed so we're not against traditional medicine but we are just being very cautious and you know because we care about people and we care about people's lives actually yeah okay so now i'm going to hand over to dr Barr for his final oh, his final yeah for him to debunk his last minutes over to you, Dr. Akbar. Another very funny but weird enough freaky myth is the fact that the thing doctors have not noticed. There are people like him. We love the world. But philanthropies, well, we are human, so we have some people who like to give out. We, 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 like, to, we like to help. But in the end, if you come to my clinic and you need treatment, you're expecting me for free. I rather my sister, I'm sorry, this cannot happen. This cannot work. Because I mean, we have to pay for the lives, we have to pay for everything. We have to, we have to put beauty in our we have to shop. Children will shop, children will go to school. So obviously, we can only do the best that we can. But I mean, giving back to the poor, giving to the community, doing our regular health, free health checks and all that, we do that. But when you enter my clinic, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be. So I think I've been able to clear those things for you. Thank you and have a lovely day. All right, so that was Dr. Akbar's concluding part where he talked about doctors, you know, people having the perception that doctors are philanthropists, you know, like um, maybe we're some Otedola or we're some um, Bill Gates, you know. Uh, I wish so. Uh, I wish I was a Bill Gates that will be doing plenty, you know, charity, charity. Yeah, so I've come to the end of today's vlog. Oh my God. Oh uh, yeah. So please, like I said, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Hit the subscribe button down below and you get all the notifications for my videos. Alright, so I don't always like to leave, but you know, I have to go. I'll see you again soon. Take care, be good, stay safe.